Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the celebration of the second Sunday of Lent. A special welcome to any visitors among us. All are invited to enjoy hospitality in the gathering room following this Mass. Our presider is Father Michael Krennick. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. At the sign of peace, especially during this time of flu season, a simple bow or similar gesture is appropriate. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome today for our celebration. We welcome also those who will be joining us via the television. As we begin this second week of Lent, we take a few moments to recognize God's love in our life, and for those times that we have failed to maybe see that love, for those times that we have sinned, let us seek God's forgiveness.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest 
through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Before I begin my sermon, this weekend, Archbishop Hebda issued a statement regarding the coronavirus, and especially since learning that we have a case now here in Minnesota. So a couple things that he asks, some are just actually reiterating things we already would ask of you, but sometimes it's good to restate those, such as, those who are ill or caring for someone who is ill are relieved of their Sunday obligation to attend Mass. We would prefer that you not spread your germs to the rest of us. The Archbishop has also asked that during the sign of peace that we do so without touching. And so, unless you're family, you can still shake hands with one another because you know each other, but maybe not to the people that you do not know. And also, connection with that, we are suspending the Eucharist under both forms. So. Today you will receive the fullness of Jesus' body and blood, but it will only be under the form of the body of Christ. We have emptied our holy water fonts, which many of you noticed as you went and saw nothing there. And so uh, also the baptismal font is empty as well. And it's just because the virus lives in water, so that's the main reason we have done that. Ministers of Holy Communion, as they have always done, take extra measures to cleanse and purify their hands, but it's worth repeating that this happens. 
And we encourage everyone, as should happen, to wash your hands often with soap and water, just as all the news uh, people tell us. And maybe take as much time as it would to say the Our Father, so you might do two things at once. <laughs> And finally, the Archbishop does ask that we hold in prayer all those who have been afflicted with this illness and with all illness and for those who are caring for them. So how do you go from virus to homily? <laughs> St. Paul in our second reading told us that life as a Christian is not always easy. And so we are reminded that when we place our full life before the Lord, it is then that we are held up to do the things that we need to do. And Jesus, of course, in our gospel today, shows three of his disciples the fullness of his glory. We have no idea why he only showed three out of the twelve, but these are the three he picked. And so he invited them up on the mountaintop and showed, him, showed them the fullness of his glory. And of course, St. Peter, as St. Peter loves to do, jumps in with some words. Let us build three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And at first glance, it might seem that Peter once again gets it wrong. But in this case, I don't think so. In fact, what Peter wanted to do was hold on to that great experience of seeing Jesus in the fullness of his glory. And not only that, but being exposed to the Moses and Elijah as well, he wanted to make sure that he wasn't just dreaming. If he had those tents, they would have to stay there for a while. But as he's talking, an even greater light comes that puts a shadow on everything else. And they hear the voice of God the Father, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And of course the disciples immediately fall prostrate before their God. Their response is very good, except for the fear part. But all of a sudden Jesus comes over and touches them, and of course, today with the virus, we would say, don't do that. But, <laughs> but Jesus touches the disciples and say, look up. And as they look up, everything is back to normal. Or sort of. It's not normal for those three disciples who have experienced the fullness of Jesus in his glory. But Jesus tells them, we have to come off this mountaintop and go back to be with the people for Jesus had not finished yet what he had come to do. And so the disciples, in particular, I think Peter, reluctantly go down the hill, and Jesus tells them, do not tell anyone this until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. My guess is, again, they would have asked Jesus, what does that mean? But again, my guess is their fear kept them from asking. So as we look at that, we look and say, how does this relate to me today? And I would say that each of us, at some point in our life, have had a religious experience that we would love to hold on to. And I actually have one of those on a VHS tape that I just recently put onto a DVD because it's when I celebrated my very first Mass as a priest. And not only because it's also wonderful to see how nervous I was and to see how unaccustomed I was to celebrating in front of people, but also how much I trusted that the Lord would make it all right. And that's what an experience of God should be alike. And as I say, we've all probably had those. Perhaps it's your wedding day. Perhaps it was the gift of a newborn child, their baptism, or a wedding of a child. Or even the death of somebody close to us can be a very strong religious experience. And so what I encourage you to do is to be like Peter. Hold on to that experience with your fullness. 
Thank God that he has been there at that moment to help celebrate God's love in our life. And also remember, though, that we cannot just live in that mountaintop. Jesus invited the disciples to come down off the mountain, and he invites us also to make sure that we, in our everyday life experience, take him with us. That is why we gather here today, to ask God to strengthen our faith, to help us recall those mountaintop experiences, such as when we receive the Eucharist today, we will receive once again. For we will see Jesus in the fullness of his glory. Although it may be a small wafer of, that looks like bread, it is the body of Christ. But it is not for us to leave Jesus here at the church, but to take him with us in all that we say and do. So in the week ahead, take some time to reflect upon where have you experienced God at those heights and maybe even the depths and recognize that God is always walking with us in the highs and the lows and in between. Christ invites us to take him with, take him with us this day. So ask God, help us to remember that throughout this week ahead. So that in the second week of Lent, we may experience the fullness of God's love and take that love with those around us. And perhaps even share with those around us that great experience of how we felt God's love in those high moments, inviting others to share their faith as well. Because once again, that's what it is all about. It's not enough for us to say, I'm a faithful person, I'm a, a religious person, but I never talk about my faith. No, it's supposed to be both and. We live it out, we experience it, but we share it as well. May God continue to strengthen our faith as we journey in faith closer to our God, so that we too, at the end of our days, may experience Jesus in the fullness of his glory. Now in faith we pray, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As you know, several people from our community are preparing to be received into full communion of the Catholic Church, to be confirmed and to receive the Eucharist at their Easter Vigil this year. As Lent progresses, their preparations and our prayers for them become more focused and intense. I now invite them to come forward with their sponsors and face the assembly. We invited Paul Adelaide, but unfortunately he had to travel to California, so he won't be with us, but we still ask that you pray for Paul, Matthew Jordan, and Maria Benito.
I invite everyone to join me in praying in silence that these, our friends, may open their hearts to Christ who has accompanied them on their journeys. Candidates, I invite you now to bow your heads and pray for the grace of insight and repentance, healing and guidance. Now let us intercede for these candidates, the Church, and our world. That Christ may open their eyes and their hearts to the will of God in their lives, we pray to the Lord. aside any doubts, fears, or obstacles that hinder them from following Christ, we pray to the Lord. them with courage to witness the good things God has done for them. We pray to the Lord. Christians may grow in faith and unite in works of goodness, righteousness, and truth. We pray to the Lord. dispel darkness in our world and lead humanity into the light of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. God's mercy will cover those who are sick or in need, and for all those who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, you create us, created us in love and redeem us in mercy. Enlighten this man and woman by your grace, that clearly seeing the temptations in their lives, they may place all their trust in you. In silence, let us now call upon the Holy Spirit to heal and guide our friends in Christ. And now I invite all to extend your hand with me in prayer. Lord Jesus, whose love reaches out to embrace the contrite of heart, heal and strengthen these candidates, lead them along the way of holiness, that they may be joyful witnesses to your gospel. 
Listen, O Lord, now as we pray together our Archdiocesan Synod prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, make our ears to hear, make our eyes to see, make our mouths to speak, make our hearts to see, make our hands to reach out and touch the world with your love. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. And please be seated now as we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, 
he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly here on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, and those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God, 
God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us show to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Comfort my people, says your God. 
speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Here is my servant. What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. Here is my servant. Here is my son. Here is my chosen beloved one.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I just was listening to the music again and just want to publicly thank our choir week in and week out they always bring us to the mountaintop so thank you we thank you also for those who have already given gifts to the catholic services appeal we have reached about 25 percent of our goal already if you have not contributed yet please know that your participation makes a difference you may use the envelopes in the pews, and we thank you for your generosity. We hope you will make time for some of our Lenten prayer services, ser uh, prayer services and information opportunities here at St. Olaf, such as adult faith formation options, including a video series on the Mass, discussions that encounter, and Minnesota, our common home. On Fridays at 11.15, we have Stations of the Cross. On St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, we will have Irish music at our noon mass and a lunch to follow. And we will be offering anointing of the sick at the noon mass on Saturday, March 21st. That's a week from Saturday. And you may take one of the cards in the pews or see the bulletin on our website for more information. The Lord be with you. Be Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain the glory whose beauty he showed to his, in his own body to the amazement of his apostles through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Mass is ended, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.